you have to let yourself look ugly in order to meet your full potential. And I made a video about this on TikTok very recently and it did really well. So it showed me that a lot of people need to hear this as much as I do. Everything I talk about, of course, are things that I need to hear and that I am working through or need to start working through. And this is one of them, right? It's this idea of letting yourself look ugly and looking ugly, it can mean physically, sure, but it can also be emotionally. It could be within your work, your creative endeavors, whatever that is. Letting yourself look imperfect, letting yourself not look the way you think you should look in order to be approved of and validated. And so I think this applies specifically to those of us who are people pleasers, perfectionists, as I am, as I talk about a lot. Throughout most of my life, I've struggled with this concept, right? This idea of in order to get the things I need as a human, right? Love, care, appreciation, safety, security, whatever. I need to look a certain way, speak a certain way, say the right things to people, behave a specific way. And while in some cases, yeah, you know, we have to follow a certain script because our society demands that of us at times. Um, in many cases too, though, we have to allow ourselves to just be ugly because it's in the ugliness of being human that the truth lies, right? The way we are able to connect with each other is through our ugliness. Because as humans, we are ugly. We're disgusting. We're gross. We're all the things that we don't want to be and that we're told not to be, right? That our shame tells us not to be, that we've been conditioned to believe we shouldn't be. We are those things. So there's really no point even trying to hide it. And many of us do, again, myself included. We try to hide these parts of ourselves. We try to mask these parts of ourselves with perfection, right? With trying to be a specific way in order to be validated and approved of. And I think it's really important for all of us to practice looking ugly or letting ourselves look ugly. When it comes to relationships, the way this might look is if you ask for a certain need or set a boundary or say that something upset you, whatever that is. In that scenario, you might look ugly to, to another person, right? You might not be convenient for them. You might be imperfect. You might not live up to a certain expectation or standard for them. You'll look ugly and you have to, right? That's how you establish who you are in dynamics, right? That's how you create relationships that are based in truth, in honesty and authenticity. Truth, honesty, authenticity sometimes look ugly because we're not perfect robots, we're humans. And it's in that honesty, authenticity, the ugliness of who we are at times that we find connection, authentic connection. Because as much as we are ugly, depraved, disgusting, gross humans, we're also great, amazing, wonderful. There are two sides of the same coin, right? But if we numb ourselves to one side, right? If we avoid our grossness, our ugliness, we numb ourselves to the other side as well. We numb ourselves to our greatness. You have to see both in order to understand them, right? You can't avoid one side of the spectrum and expect that you will fully be able to enjoy and experience the other side. Those are the duality of who you are as a person. You have to allow yourself to experience both. And that's really difficult because of course, we all want to be able to exist in our amazingness, but that means we have to let ourselves exist in our ugliness as well. And that's really tough. And I think a lot of the comments in that video uh, were referring to physical ugliness or attractiveness. And while that can apply, of course, this isn't the point of this discussion really. But yeah, it does apply too, because if you think about it, the example that pops into my mind when I think of this is actors, right? Those who are able to master their craft, right? Meet their full potential are those who are willing to look ugly. And the, the main example that pops into my mind is Toni Collette in Hereditary. When you watch that movie, you see her looking horrific and you see her and she's believable. She looks like a woman who is losing her mind, who is falling into the depths of just insanity based on how she's allowing herself to look. When you look at actors who refuse to go that far, to go all in, to be in it truly, you don't really believe them. Right? If they're trying to look perfect on screen or to only play perfect characters, you don't believe them after a while. Because yes, that is a part of, of being a human, right? You can look good. You're allowed to, of course. It's not all of you. And so when we see characters, when we watch people, even in real life, to believe them, to connect with them, we have to see the ugliness as well. We have to see it in ourselves to be able to connect authentically with ourselves even. So we can't avoid that part of us. 
This also applies to creative work, like I said, right? Because it, it's about letting yourself be in all the ugliness of who you are in order to create something that resonates with people. As a writer myself, I have been trying to get back into my fiction writing. I've mentioned this before on my podcast, but I've realized that a big block for me has been this inability to allow myself to exist in that ugliness in order to create characters that are realistic and that also tap into the taboos of being human. You have to exist in your ugliness while you do that. And that's been very difficult for me, right? As a people pleaser, as a perfectionist, it's really hard to do that. And that's exactly the challenge that I have to step into. We need to do that in order to meet our full potential. We have to let ourselves look ugly. Think of all the ways that being perfect or trying to be perfect, trying to say the right thing, do the right thing, has prevented you from stepping into opportunities that allow you to expand or relationships that allow you to expand. Imagine the kind of relationships that could flourish with your ugliness, right? With you showing yourself authentically, truly to somebody and them still being there, right? How can you truly feel connected to someone, seen, understood, if they aren't seeing your ugliness as much as they're seeing your amazingness? You won't. You'll always feel like there's something missing, that there's something lacking. And I know the the impulse is to try and be as good as you can be to attract a partner, potentially trying to say the right thing, do the right thing, appear the best way possible, appear high value, whatever whatever terminology you want to use. And while that might work uh, to an extent, sure, uh, I think it'll only lead to surface level connections because that's only part of us. That's only part of who you are as a person. You are ugly. Even, even if you don't want to believe it, you are. And I don't mean that as a bad thing. That's a great thing. It, it is important to be ugly because that is part of humanity. That's part of being a human. It doesn't mean you have to identify with your ugliness. It doesn't mean you have to do things that hurt others intentionally because you're leaning into your ugliness, your your grossness, your depravity, your awfulness as a person. I'm not saying that, right? Be, be self-aware, hold yourself accountable, be mindful of what you do, but don't shame yourself for your inevitable ugliness as a human. It is innate to you. It exists within you whether you like it or not. And that's okay. That's part of it. And I get it, right? Talking about this can be tricky because when we talk about systemic issues, um, ugliness is not always allowed for certain kinds of people. Of course, totally understandable. Sometimes we have to play a role in order to be okay. So I'm not saying to completely disregard that and uh, lean into this regardless of your safety. Of course, be mindful, be aware of what's best for you, right? That's the point of all of this. But sometimes, in some cases, what's best for you, what the healthiest thing for you to do is, is accept your ugliness and lean into it so that you can meet a part of yourself that you haven't been allowed to meet or you haven't been allowing yourself to meet because of the fear of being disapproved of or being seen as ugly, being seen as weak, vulnerable, right? This ties into vulnerability. Being seen as someone who is not perfect puts you in a place of vulnerability, right? You seem like someone who is flawed and fallible. Yes, you are, you're human. It's in accepting that part of ourselves that makes us strong. It's not in avoiding it, right? Only presenting ourselves as perfect and, you know, amazing, beautiful, pure, whatever words you wanna use. That's not where strength lies. If you're looking for true authentic strength, it's in being able to see your ugliness and accept it and thank it and also decide what you want to do with it, how it can benefit you in a healthy way. Benefit you, benefit the people around you. Because ultimately when we talk about connection, it, it is born from allowing ourselves to be in the dark depths of who we are as people. That is how you connect with others. Not always, of course, but many times, yeah, you have to be in that place. You have to let yourself be willing to state what you need, ask for what you want, say no, say yes, do all the things that you you might be scared to do if you're somebody who has always been taught to be a people pleaser, to not ask, to not say no. To do the opposite means you're ugly in that in that paradigm and you have to do it. It's what's best for you and it's what's best for the people in your life, even though it might not feel that way initially. So I'm here to implore you to practice existing in your ugliness, whatever that means for you. Again, ugly can be defined however you want to define it. And even the most physically attractive people, even the people that appear the most perfect to us from the outside are still ugly because they are human. They have their ugliness too. We all do. That's inescapable. So don't fall 
victim to the narrative that there are just some people who are naturally perfect and and they might look that way to you and that's great it's, it's amazing to be able to see the beauty and perfection in other people right that is part of love as well but also seeing their ugliness and seeing that as a part of them and not rejecting that not putting someone on a pedestal thinking that they're perfect amazing they can do no wrong it, it's kind of disrespectful to do that to a person right to not accept ugliness as part of them because it is a part of them and it deserves to be appreciated just as much right so I hope this was helpful. I hope it was informative. I hope it gave you a different perspective on the concept of being ugly or letting yourself be ugly in order to meet your full potential. You kind of have to. And maybe the reason you feel blocked right now, the reason you feel like you're not tapping into a certain part of yourself is because you're not letting yourself be ugly in whatever way that means for you. So practice it. Try leaning into it. See how it feels. See how you feel about it. I think it can be kind of freeing and liberating, at least from my own experience. So hopefully this gave you a little bit of encouragement to do that. If you want to hear more from me, feel free to follow me on TikTok and Instagram. Um, I also have a Substack where I write essays about these topics as well. It's also where I'm going to be doing more of my fiction writing, where I dabble in my own ugliness, creating certain kinds of characters. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check out the links in the description box. Um, I also offer one-to-one -one calls if you want to talk about these things in more depth. Of course, I'm not a therapist. I just love talking about these things. And I think it's interesting to bounce ideas off of other people. So if you're interested in that, again, all the links will be in the description of this uh, episode. Other than that, thank you for listening. And I'll be back again soon with another episode.